channel. Today we're doing something very new. It's not dig it with Raven, it's dig in with Raven. Get it? This is a new series and I hope you're hungry because we're going to be noshing on some pretty tasty ancient treats over the next few months. Now I know there are, you know, medieval cookbooks and things like that, but I want to get as ancient as possible with you guys, which means we're going to be treading into some very murky archaeological records, some primary resources, dealing with a lot of interpretation, and let's not forget that I live in the Netherlands, which means it's a little bit difficult to get some of the more exotic foodstuffs. Now I am not a chef, I'm not a food historian, and I'm definitely not an archaeobotanist. Some of my materials will be modern, I will have to make concessions for things, but if all of you were expecting me to make my own ceramic pots, grind my own flour, and cook over an open flame, well, manage your expectations because ain't nobody got time for that. First up, because you can take the girl out of Egyptology, but you can't take Egyptology out of the girl, we're traveling back in time to the banks of the Nile and cooking up an ancient Egyptian sweet treat called tiger nut balls. Ancient Egypt is funny because we have so much documentation for a lot of official things like buildings and pharaohs and all that stuff and wars, but we don't have documentation for personal lives, for game rules, and they also did not write down recipes. Luckily, we do have a lot of depictions and drawings from tombs and things of foodstuffs, a lot of ingredients, a lot of things that they did make and ate. Egypt is also super unique because of the climate, right? Because it's so hot and dry there, so much gets preserved and sometimes we're able to even get food residues out of the bottoms of jars. Sometimes we're actually finding desiccated dates and other ingredients that are in tombs that people were buried with to use in the afterlife, which is amazing because then we can use all that archaeological science to really get into the nitty gritty, find out how they were made and just really get a better idea of ancient Egyptian diets. Today we're actually making something that we have a recipe for. Apparently the recipe for these tiger nut sweets or tiger nut balls was found on a piece of ostraca that was dating to around 1600 BCE. And I say apparently because I see mentions about this ostraca everywhere, this piece of pottery, but I've never been able to track it down. Like I can't even find a picture of it. I don't know who has it anymore. I don't find any publications on it and I also just don't know where it's held. That means I don't know what exactly was written on that piece of pottery, I don't know how they interpreted it, and I also don't know if they included any sort of methods or preparation list on the ostraca itself. But the recipe is on the American Research Center in Egypt's website, and who am I to argue with them? From pictures of other people that have made these, they kind of look like proto-energy balls, and everyone's eating these date balls nowadays, and so it seems very on point, very on trend. I would also like to mention that this recipe is paleo, vegetarian, gluten-free, lactose-free, and refined sugar-free. So the recipe calls for walnuts, dates, honey, ground almonds, cinnamon, and a little bit of water. Surprisingly, tiger nut balls or tiger nut sweets do not contain tiger nuts, and I was a little confused by that, but I was able to track down some tiger nuts in Amsterdam, and they look like dehydrated chickpeas and I found out that tiger nuts are not actually nuts they are tubers I don't get it but I'm gonna try it <laughs> oh very hard mm, it's nutty it's definitely nutty it's kind of sweet and like weirdly chewy it kind of tastes like a really dense chewy honey nut cheerio tiger nuts were one of the very first plants that were cultivated in Egypt they were used for a lot of different foods and then they were also used apparently for medicine. But anyways, let's get back to this tiger nut free tiger nut ball. All right, we need one cup of dates without their pit. So as I said before, we are very fortunate to have the foodstuffs that we have from ancient Egypt because of the climate. So much organic material gets preserved and a really good example of that is King Tut's tomb. In King Tut's tomb, we found bread, wine, mummified poultry, which is pretty neat, leeks, garlic, you name it. You could have had a whole feast off of what was buried with King Tut. They also found lots of dates in King Tut's tomb, and not just any dates, pitted dates, because Pharaoh ain't got time to pit his own dates. Come on! So the recipe says now we have to chop the dates. Dates were the most common fruit in ancient Egypt, actually. They were eaten fresh, they were eaten dried, they even put them into beer. I would definitely try date beer. 
Oh yeah. Oh Lord. Okay, so now we have the dates chopped. The recipe now calls for us to blend the dates with our quarter cup of water. Just gonna... Oh boy. Oh wow. All right, let's just pour some of this water in here now. Just a little bit at a time and get mashing. Oof. Oh, oof. That's a fun sound. Don't think I'm gonna put the rest of the water in. I put in about half of the water. I'm gonna hold off until I put the nuts in to see how this forms. But now we need to chop our walnuts and we need half a cup of walnuts. Okay, so let's just transfer this, whatever this is, into this bowl so we can see what we're doing here. Nuts were also a very common thing to eat in the ancient world. Walnuts, almonds. We even found nuts in. Let's go back to King Tut's too. We found them in King Tut's too. So let's just add this in here. Oh boy. All right. Ah, I forgot the cinnamon. One teaspoon of cinnamon gets added to this mixture right here. Oh yeah. It feels like if Silly Putty or something would just continually Dab you clearly did not chop these almonds small enough and they are just digging into the sides of my fingers. It's already quite sticky and mushy. I'm glad I didn't put the rest of the water in. Cinnamon is not native to Egypt. Cinnamon comes from places like China and Sri Lanka. But we know the Egyptians were big traders and we have reports from Hatshepsut, a very famous lady queen, and another pharaoh called Sethos who report bringing back cinnamon from trade expeditions. And these trade expeditions went to the fanciful land of Punt. Punt, wherever it was, because archaeologists haven't yet found it yet, that probably also didn't grow cinnamon. It seemed to be like a middle point between the places that grew cinnamon out in the east and Egyptians. So it was kind of like where they were just, you know, trade all of their goods. It was a really big trading location. Cinnamon, because it comes from so far away, would have been very, very expensive, and that means normal people wouldn't be eating it and they wouldn't be eating a lot of it. It was probably used very sparingly as a very exotic spice. If we're looking at how cinnamon was actually consumed in ancient Egypt, that's where things get a little bit muddy. We don't have any records of people saying that they've eaten it, but we do know that it was used for offerings to the gods, and we know that it was used in medicinal purposes, which is cool because we now know that cinnamon does have antibacterial properties. So someone figured that out back then. Also, the Greek writer Diodorus says that cinnamon was one of the spices used in mummification. So that's pretty cool too. All right, we have our giant ball of goo. So let's make this into more manageable bite-sized balls now. All right, so now the next step calls for us to take our giant date mush, put it in some honey, like roll it all around with in a ball, coat it in some ground almonds, and then just let it be, let it set on a piece of wax paper. Let's get to rolling. The recipe doesn't say how much, how big they're supposed to be, but I want them to be like kind of little bite sizes. So I'm gonna make them about that big. It's gonna be messy. Oh boy. Oh my goodness. And honey was a very popular thing in the ancient world. Like dates, it's a, a natural sweetener. We've actually found honey in an Egyptian tomb that dated to 3,000 years ago. Like, what? The Egyptians were big beekeepers. We have evidence on walls of these cylindrical like beehives that they used to use when they were cultivating honey. There's a bee hieroglyph, which is pretty cool. Honey was used in a lot of things. It was used in food, for medicinal purposes, and it was also even stated that it was used as an embalming fluid. Let's keep on rolling, rolling, rolling. Rolling, rolling, and we're rolling, rolling, rolling on the river. Okay, girl, get it, get it over you. Mm, yeah. All right, I'm gonna clean up, let these sit a little bit, and I will see you in probably just a few seconds because we're just gonna, you know, TV magic it. And I brought my taste, taste, my test, taste tester, test, taste tester. It's me to try these tiger nut balls. So tell me a bit about them. You know, like 
You see those in the stores now? All those like hip cafes, they have like the date balls with the, with the energy, the energy balls made mm -hmm. out of dates and nuts and things. This is one of those, but from 1600 BCE. Like a vegan power bar. Kinda. Is it vegan? No. So to eat this in the right mindset, I need to go back to ancient Egypt? Ancient Egypt, 1600 Six. BCE. It's hot. Are there pyramids? Yeah, it's been there for like a thousand years. Oh, my God. Nice, I'm peckish. You're a little peckish? He's the hot sun. Peckish. You've been working all day. Cool. You need a little bit of energy. You need some sugar. You need some iron. Here we go. Tiger nut. Also, fun fact, there's no tiger nuts in these tiger nut balls. There are type of nuts called tiger nuts. They're not nuts. They are tubers. Oh. Can I eat one? Try it. They're a bit dry. Yeah. All right. Okay. Do people eat them just as a snack? They're like that new health food that's coming up. Yeah. Here we go. I haven't tried them yet. I'm waiting for you. They look like tiger nuts. Have you seen a tiger nut up close? Mm-hmm. Oh. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Oh wow. It's sweet. It's very sweet. But delicious. You like it? I really like it. Yeah. I have a sweet tooth. I think it was a bit firmer. Mm-hmm. Then it would really be like a, a power bar. And you could sell it mm. in, in Starbucks. But I think without the water, these are pretty decent, like good breakfast food. Yeah. Like an all the go breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. These are like legit good. And where does it um, stand on the food pyramid? Most fruit and nuts. She didn't catch the pyramid joke. Oh. Um, and guys, if you want to try and make these yourself, I've put a couple of links to different recipes from blogs and as well as the American Research Center in Egypt's uh, link in my description down below, definitely check that out. What would the brand name be if you write this? I know the tagline. Huh. You're gonna want a Ramsey's in your mouth. How do you come up with this stuff on the spot? That's all I do. So the, the tiger nut is a small component of this. It's not in there. It's not in there? No. You showed me a bowl of it. Yeah, I thought so you just meant there's no... There. Did it not come in the recipe? No, they just call them tiger nut balls without tiger nuts. Did we go around to like 15 stores looking for tiger nuts and you didn't even need them? I'm gonna use them for a different ancient recipe. Maybe you use instead of the almonds, use tiger nuts. Yeah, I'm putting a tiger nut in my tiger nut balls. <laughs> I give you five out of five eyes of Horus. Flum, 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 flum. That's the most amount. All right, guys. Well, if you liked that video as much as Kurt liked my balls, go ahead and smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And a big thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon for supporting the vlog. Help me, you know, fund the ingredients that I had to run around town looking for. If you like the channel, you want to support what I'm doing, go ahead and become a patron on Patreon to just help me on my journey to become a full-time archaeology YouTuber, which sounds weird, but I'm going to try and make it a thing. Here's all my socials, and as always, stay dirty, my friends.